Hey there, welcome to today's lesson on Bohr models. Today I pose the question, what are three prominent features or characteristics of Bohr's model of the atom? Number one, I would say that he maintains or kept the nucleus that Rutherford had discovered. He did not in any way disprove the existence of the Rutherford nucleus. Number two, he kept the electrons from cycling into the nucleus by locking them into orbitals. And then number three, he described the behavior of those electrons and their ability to move within the atom. To our current knowledge, there are seven known energy levels and each energy level corresponds to a period on the periodic table. A period on the periodic table is just one of the horizontal rows that run side to side. The idea of drawing a Bohr model is that it's going to show us the internal structure of the atom. Now, looking at this atom, can you figure out what element this is? This element is most certainly carbon, and you would know that because it has six protons in its nucleus. It also has six electrons, and if we are noting that this is an atom, then we can count on the number of electrons to tell us the identity of the atom but only if it's an atom, if it's an ion, that's not true. Um, we know that it has two energy levels and it has four electrons in its valence shell. Now, as you get further away from the nucleus of an atom, your energy levels or your electron shells, energy clouds, electron clouds, um, principal energy levels, there's lots of names for them. <laughs> your electron shells are going to become larger. They are going to be able to hold more electrons and those electrons will have more potential energy. Now, the electrons are attracted to the nucleus. That's because the nucleus has an overall positive charge and electrons are negative. So your electrons are constantly going to be trying to get closer to the nucleus. That's part of the reason why uh, Niels Bohr went in and updated the Rutherford model of the atom. There are limits on the number of electrons that can fit within a particular energy level because the electrons are going to repel each other. They don't really like each other. So if you get too many in too small of an area, you're just going to break your atom. So um, there is a sweet spot for the number of electrons that fit in each energy level. Just a reminder, the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. And when we're talking about atoms, this is also equal to the number of electrons. Now, finding the number of neutrons can be a little tougher. Uh, we are going to take the atomic mass or the average atomic mass, and we're going to round it to a whole number. This is going to tell us the number of protons and neutrons within that atom. Knowing this is the number of protons and this is the number of protons and neutrons, how do you think we could find the number of neutrons itself? If you want to subtract those numbers, you're correct. You take that mass number or the average atomic mass rounded to a whole number, subtract out the atomic number, and you would be left with the number of neutrons. And once you have this information, drawing a Bohr model is really easy. All you have to do is figure out the number of protons from the periodic table, figure out the number of neutrons doing your rounding and subtracting. Again, you can just find this from the periodic table itself. And then you are going to determine the number of energy levels you're working with. And because carbon is in the second row or the second period of the periodic table, you know that you will be working with two energy levels of electrons. You also know that you will have six electrons inside of that carbon. But the question is, how do you organize those six electrons across the two principal energy levels? And this is where the magic of the periodic table comes into play. In the first energy level, hydrogen and helium, there are two elements, and that tells you that only two electrons will fit in the first energy level. We can fit up to eight electrons in the second energy level because there are eight elements in the second period of the periodic table. Carbon will only need four, and we can also determine that by the fact that carbon is the fourth element in this row. So it'll have four electrons in its second energy level. 
To reiterate, the row or the period of the periodic table will indicate the maximum number of electrons that will fit in its corresponding energy level. So in level one, we can fit two electrons. In level two, we can fit eight electrons as indicated by the eight elements in that principle, I'm sorry, in that period. We can also fit eight electrons in the third energy level. And that again, indicated by the fact that there are eight elements in that period. And then we get to the fourth row or uh, the fourth period rather. And this has 18 elements, which gets crazy. And the big jump here is because we um, organize our electrons a little bit more specifically. Um, and I will talk about that in a future video. Just something to note that electrons do love the nucleus. They want to get as close to the nucleus as possible. So it's important to fill lower energy levels before moving out to higher energy levels. Now take a minute to see if you can fill in this information for potassium, looking at just its space on the periodic table. And in case you needed some help, potassium symbol on the periodic table is K. That one's a little bit crazy. I'm not sure if that comes from Latin. I would assume yes, because many of our elements with weird symbols come from Latin, but it might also be German, I'm not sure. I hope this is what you came up with. Potassium is number 19 on the periodic table, which indicates it has 19 protons and 19 electrons. Its mass number is 39. The atomic mass of potassium is 39.10. Rounding that to the closest whole number gives us 39. When you do 39 minus 19, you'd find that you have 20 neutrons in the average atom of potassium. Because potassium is in the fourth energy level, it I'm sorry, because potassium is in the fourth period of the periodic table, it will have four energy levels of electrons, and those will be organized 2, 8, 8, 1. A maximum of two electrons fit in the first energy level. Then we'd have eight because there's eight elements in the second period of the periodic table. Again, that would also be true for the third period and the third energy level. All of that together would give us 18 electrons, but because potassium has 19, we will have to put one in the fourth energy level. Our picture would look a lot like this. This is kind of a shortcut if you are asked to draw Bohr models in uh, your classroom, if your teacher is asking you, if you have some type of test, I would ask if you are permitted to write in shorthand that you have 19 protons indicated by the positive and 20 neutrons indicated by the zero with the slash. Some teachers will want you to draw individual protons. I'm not one of those teachers just because I don't want to count 19 protons. And I also think it's kind of a silly way to catch a kid in a mistake. But some teachers are real, real sticklers for the Bohr models and want them done like a classic Bohr model. So that is something you should ask your teacher. That's what I have for you on Bohr models. Be sure to stick around tomorrow for the lesson on atomic Lewis structures. You may find that writing all of these pictures is a lot easier when we move on to the Lewis structures. Leave any questions you have in the comments section. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow's video and I'll see you there. Bye.